My name's Brian Greenwald. These are my two sons. I'm Rat Greenwald. I'm Barry Greenwald. Well, we uh, we grow dry beans, northerns and pintos. Uh, raise corn for grain and silage, and uh, feed cattle. Well, weather's the biggest one. Certain years, it's the amount of uh, irrigation water we have that limits. Uh, can't really think of any other factors. Uh, can you guys? Other than just regular Mother Nature, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the biggest. And then, like I say, just the amount of we're so <clears throat> dependent on uh, irrigation here that yeah. there's not much without it. With the uh, abundant moisture we've had on this pasture, we can we can utilize it this year, whereas in past years we it's it just burns up too quick and we we can't really utilize it. There's the soils are real shallow, so <clears throat> there's not a lot of moisture holding capacity there. So it's just a marginal pasture. Last year we put in some some sub irrigation, just it's called drip tape, and it's. Uh, it's just basically a, a light plastic uh, hose with emitters every two feet and it's it's put in the ground about 14 inches deep. The filter system it has to filter silt and dirt and debris out of the ditch water so it's pretty elaborate the filter system is and, uh, and it's it's very efficient compared to flood and pivot irrigation. And, uh, we mainly, our biggest selling selling point on it was the fact that we could fit it in some irregular, irregular shaped fields. A lot more versatile than having to deal with sprinklers and it's a lot easier than having to irrigate three different directions on one field. You can take it in places that you couldn't get to before and it makes it so much easier. As far as non-crop, you can basically see it all from right here. It's gonna be, you know, this slough goes behind, behind the buildings and then this pasture from the highway down to the river. And it's not very big. As far as non-crop, that's about all we, we really have. For wildlife, it oh yeah, it harbors a lot of uh, a lot of white-tailed deer, mule deer, and then you know, as far as predators, yeah, there's coyotes and fox and just a lot of wildlife in general. We try to keep the noxious weeds down. You know, it's it's. <laughs> it's it's full of thistle usually. It's full of thistle. I mean, it's hard to get in there. It's just like a jungle. It's hard to get in there to to manage weeds. But to, yeah, we try to <clears throat> try to keep them from encroaching on the, the row crop. As far as managing, yeah, that's about the only only uh, additional effort we give is just spraying and mowing, and trying to control the noxious weeds. Intending fence and stuff. If you're gonna put out cattle and. The only public interest in the uh, non-crop land would be the Grattan Massacre and its markers. There's a state historical marker. And it's on the property out in the cropland. It's about the only thing I've really had any, you know, public uh, perception is. Just the people that stop to look at the markers and people that ask to walk in to see the, the marker that's off the highway. It's been managed the same way since I was a kid. And it's how I was taught to manage it and it's still done that way.
What changes would, would you guys make? More drip tape. Yeah. <laughs> more sprinklers and more drip tape. Yeah. yeah. If we had, if we had, uh, if we were gonna make any more changes, it would be in the irrigation and going with more sprinklers and uh, drip tape, just to just ease up on the labor.